screw your freaking screw screw bell phone or G and all that sort of thing. Who the hell is Who the hell is a poem? What the hell happened to him? Everyone else is dead? Except for Nix? They died. On the planet. Planet. They died on the planet before. They blew themselves up. Alright, should we hit up the sergeant for a recap, or do we want to hit uh, Corporal Rios for a recap? Do we want to hear it in the uh, iconic tones of Leo Baxter complaining through the recap, or uh, do we want to hear the self-aggrandizing <laughs> Greek version? <laughs> it's because Greek is the only one who has really done anything, so. It's Greek, geek, I think it's it's <laughs> it should be Geek the Greek. Greek the geek. We should, yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on, private. Tell us what happened. No, I was sidelined. You, I, I think I, I'm, I'm going to defer to authority on this one. Oh. I'm a Don't make me pick. Crying out loud. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. You guys are true Marines. No volunteers. Fine. We know better. Uh, I'll roll a die. There are six of you. So I'll roll a d6. Four. <laughs> Starting with Ivan, one. Jose, two. Craig, three. Eloy, four. And then it would have been Ivan again for five and Jose again for six. You guys had two chances. But we got Eloy. Eloy. Okay. All right. Classic. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So we are a uh, fire team of Marines. We were sent to um lb uh, not to um say the reticuli to uh check on the colony i think i don't even remember why we were no, sorry our, about our, that another another part of our, our unit was um sent out in the middle of the night oh some and time they, ago and they and didn't respond so we then we, we got sent, distress distress we, call 19 days ago we were sent to investigate the, the Sulaco, right? Uh, and we arrived in system to find ourselves under fire. A uh, computer woke us up. There were uh, two ships firing on us. One turned out to be the Sulaco. One turned out to be a presumed pirate vessel. Uh, there was some exchange of fire and our ship, the Montebello, uh, knocked their engines out. So they are now drifting uh, uh, in a collision course with a station, space station, uh, a small one, an orbit control station, yes, near uh, LV426. Um, and so, uh, we have been sent over to investigate the status of the Sulaco, make sure what you know, investigate what happened to those Marines, check the source of the distress call 19 days ago. Um, for which we use the Mantis uh, craft piloted by Jumper, our marine aviator. Um, there was uh, some uh, concern about our docking uh, the Sulaco um, because we were afraid we'd get fired on. And there was an open bay in the rear, uh, the, the main landing bay. And so at last minute, instead of docking to the airlock near the bridge, we decided to pilot the craft down to the main hangar bay um, where we found there was one missing landing craft. Uh, it was a difficult uh, role, but uh, between Geek and uh, uh, Jumper, they managed to uh, get us inside the ship where we found evidence of you know, synthetic blood on the, on the floor and uh, gouging of like claws, um, we entered the ship uh, and began, you know, to proceed forward to the bridge because, again, our priority is to establish power or at least get power to the thrusters to see if we can move the Sulaco out of the collision course to the uh, station and find out the Marines. So we started uh, uh, moving forward. We ran into a trip wire as we ascended the stairs. We deactivated the, the trip wire. I believe we spent some time uh, trying to rig the thing for future use. Um, 
And then we, we just marked it. Yeah. Oh, we um, yeah. I think we just marked it. Yeah. Okay. And so we proceeded Future forward. Avoidance. Future avoidance, uh, yeah. Until we found the gunnery section, I believe, where the uh, rail cannons were. And there was a computer node where we found uh, tons and tons of blood and a discarded uh, canvas-like structure, uh, which we are assuming is some sort of shedded skin. Um, oh, you're assuming. You're assuming. I'm, I'm assuming. Just thinking, yeah. It's, pl it's plastic. It's plastic, right? That's what it looks like. But as we're doing that, Geek is checking the computers. The rest of us are looking around the air vents and the, uh, you know, we, we found out that the ship expended all its ammunition. Uh, so it wasn't really firing on the Montebello. And uh, Geek was checking the computer. I honestly don't remember exactly what he was checking because I was looking through the uh, vents. Um and uh, found a uh, corpse uh, of uh, someone with disheveled appearance wearing uh, marine type uh, uniforms, very unkempt with multiple patches in the wrong position, leading me to think that the, uh, this is a dead bandit hanging upside down from, from the roof, uh, dead, obviously. And that's pretty much where we left it. All right. We had discovered that the two ships had been firing on each other. The pirate vessel and the Sulaco had been firing on each other and to the point of expending the ammunition for the railgun. Obviously not very accurate. Any, any real gunner or the Sulaco on, on its automatics would have been able to make short work of the pirate otherwise. But... Uh, and this had happened 12 days ago. Which explains the condition of the blood and the, the ripe condition of the body. What it did not explain was how this man could have such a large exit wound with no entrance wound. Right. Right. And the automatic... Uh, alarm voice of the computer mother had announced that two hours and 29 minutes to collision with the orbit control station. Now, one thing I will kind of share to put things in context, the main drives of the Sulaco are this large fusion drive, but there is a reaction drive because it's a ship of war. It does have a, a secondary form of, of movement, which although you're not pilots, you could certainly be walked through in uh, either by mother or by um, the flight crew on, on the Montebello. All right, so going to the bridge fits with that right if we can at goal. least move the ship with the maneuvering thrusters right we can change trajectory the right. sooner we do that the bigger the distance the, the more margin of of error we have before we hit the station and then i guess we have to deal with the uh pirate ship which is also in, in parallel course so i guess it also is on a collision course so uh well <sighs> think this guy must have swallowed a grenade or something that's damn peculiar uh geek can you can you access the ship's uh maneuvering thrusters from that station doesn't look like i can right. not from where we are well i guess maybe I from move. the bridge i guess we gotta move on then right Sarge? yeah uh go ahead baxter point Rio's team leader, I'll bring up the rear. Let's move out. Going out the same door. I guess we're going to head towards the um, most likely way to go to the bridge. Bridge. So mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Back into the stairwell, back up. Back. Right. right, yeah. Okay. So the, the stairwells are quite long. 
right? So rather than lots of back and forth movements, right? In order for the artificial gravity to be effective, right? They're quite long, right? And in case of, in case of accident with sudden deceleration or loss of, of Gs, right? So you're making your, your gradual progress up and moving down and back through the core of the ship. You're on the third, on deck three, right? The main decks of the stairwell services are the even decks, you know, 10, 8, 4, 2. So you come up to a main or a larger access point on deck two, but the bridge is on deck one, which is another smaller access stair. Deck two would be on, a, on any ship like the Sulaco officers quarters and uh, the mess and meeting halls for large briefings and, and that sort of stuff and triage in case of battle injuries, right? So it's mainly a multi-purpose deck. The upper deck is the command level deck. Not a lot of reason for you to ever go here, but it's not that you are unfamiliar. It should be a long corridor, the bridge at the end, there'll be a main node for mother, right? Where all functions of mother can be accessed if you have the right protocol. And there's you know, a, a ready room. <coughs> right. And glance so, over, glance over buddy, just making sure that that's the direction we're going. Okay. All right. Now, towards deck one. as you are passing deck two to make the dog leg to head back toward the bulkhead for deck one, the stairs kind of catch a little bit under your boot, Baxter. Not that you trip, but you, mm. you know, that the corrugated steel of the stair isn't smooth, right? It catches at the edge of your boot. And reflects we just look down. What the hell? Sticking out, not sticking out, but down the side of your boot, there should just be stair in both directions. Yeah. But off to your left, the corrugated webbing of the steel is simply missing. Not for the whole stair, but these round sections, it's totally missing. I glance over my shoulder, but I just watch your step and I just glance down towards the holes in the floor and keep going. Difficult to spot because the floor already has holes. The stairs already mm -hmm. have holes, but the mm -hmm. pattern is broken, right? right. And this continues for the rest of the stairs. Does it look like there's been explosions here? No, because the stairs, the shape of the stairs has not been deformed. There's no soot. There's no other debris. There's no sign of other damage in the stairwell. It's just that parts of the corrugation of the steel step is simply not there. And it starts at deck two. Yeah. Okay. Does it look like solid? I mean, is it look, does it look like it's dangerous, like it won't hold up weight, or that it might not hold up weight, in my <laughs> estimation? it's It seems to be supporting Baxter. Okay. It's supporting Baxter without quivering or shaking or deforming, and he's definitely the heaviest with the with the yeah. smart gun and the edges where there should be steel and there isn't don't look bright. So it doesn't look like they were sawed well, through, yeah. right? They actually look a little melted. Mm. Poor maintenance on this stairs space out, provide cover while Baxter uh, goes ahead. One, one by one. So we'll, you know, leave some space between Marines. Uh, so make sure the floor is steady. And so I'll start covering 
uh, and, and, you know, tap uh, Baxter on the shoulder for him to proceed. Okay. So he moves a little bit ahead, and then when he's crossed, then I cross, and then so we're leaving some room in between. When you reach the top, all the other doors, right, with the exception of deck three, were closed. Deck three, they were open like the doors were on way down on, on deck 10 at the bottom of the ship, right, where they had been hacked open and left open, right, through the stairwell. They were all closed except deck three, where they went in and had tried to get in to the computer node, right, to access mother. Once you are in view of the deck one doors, they are likewise open. This is Do a set of look? double doors, right? One side, you can't see the door. It's very likely recessed into the wall like it should be. The other one is visible and deformed. So it have the same kind of marks like the computer node doors did because we were thinking this might have been a, a loader. A, a, <laughs> right. a loader from... Very similar deformation. You know, like it's rolled, not very neatly, but, but definitely rolled and crumpled a bit, but not in ways that you've seen debt cord or other explosive do. It looks physical, like what you would do to tinfoil. And do the corridors that we've been traversing, are they big enough to hold a, a man or a woman on, in a loader? Deck three, the maintenance areas before you get into the crawl spaces, right? But the, the staging areas and the maintenance zones are... The stairwell is, although is it, someone walking up these stairs in a loader would have to be beyond expert. How the hell did they get a loader up here? I sharp, everybody. And I'm going to like uh, do the standard run and pass the door in front, you know, point the smart gun in sort of thing, you know, the cover for okay. everybody to do a serious point thing. Now, um, I have a serious said, question for you. I want you to consider. Just a second. Sorry, Jose. Do you favor your left or your right when you go through a door? Are you right. to the left or are you to the right? Because hmm. this is going to be true for the rest of your character's life. <laughs> However short that may be. This is going to be a great <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not, it's, yeah, so it's not a very vital question, but you know, the one that needs answering. Uh, I, well, kind of. I guess going in righty, holding the smart gun the way you would. Left, right. I'm prob. I'm probably looking left more. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking. Of, <laughs> Sorry, Jose. What I've was going to ask? No, my, my question is: so there's a hallway and there's doors on either side, and then it leads to the to a door oh, at the end. Gentlemen, I have actually decided to share with you some of my incredible art. <sighs> All right. Now. When you see it, you are going to feel your heart palpitate and you're going to feel flashes of embarrassment. Why can't my art be as good and, and stuff like that? I just want you to. And please like, don't, the people at home, don't screenshot this. You know, this will be up for auction. <laughs> uh, you know, no. it's copyrighted. So please. You know. now, now, Craig, I've seen this before. Play nice. So this is yes. not my first Brace video, yourself, but, Craig. Like, yeah. Brace yourself. This is <laughs> so here we go. So we, we came up the stairs and we turned Microphone. right towards the bridge. Yes, the stairs are down there by B uh -huh. okay, at, the, at the bottom of the screen. And Baxter, as he goes through, is turning left into a pile of debris, uh, oh. which, which includes anything that isn't molded into the walls of, the, of these USC MC craft normally. Right. You know, the the deck chairs are connected to the floors. The desks are modular. They're in the walls. Right. So they have or he has or they or whoever has right pulled stuff, everything that they could. Desks, sample cases, um, 
Hmm. Food boxes uh, piled does it up look randomly. Like, like they were trying to block the passage. Yes, very much so. Okay. So somebody didn't want to get somebody did somebody did not want somebody to get through here. And are there signs? Like I keep looking for signs of of bullet holes on the bulkheads, or uh, you know, signs of a firefight. There are no Blood signs splatter. of a firefight, but this pile of debris at the top of the stairs it looks like to the left it's piled up to make a barricade to block off going further down that hallway away from the bridge but to the right it looks like what was on top of that barricade just scattered it's not really higher than your knees and it's kind of random it doesn't have any form or shape to it like the but there is the a floor side. to ceiling barricade all the way down at the end of the hall in front of the doors to the bridge. Right. Okay. All right. So stick this by the numbers as we go down the hall. Bodhi, you're going to take the door on the left. And then once we're sure that's clear, uh, Greek takes the one on the right. And I want uh, Baxter to make it all the way to the other barricade. Excellent. And that, doors. Yeah, it doesn't mean that that uh, you know they, that that's the only person going in the room. It's just going to be whoever who's going to lead going into the room. Because yeah. place this small, we probably don't want the smart gunner first in a small room. So down the hallway, shadows are leaping everywhere. As you all are carrying your personal lights, the only illumination mm-hmm. is a thin green layer, not higher than your ankles, so that you don't you know place a foot wrong. The footing is silent. It's a thick, rubbery, non-slip surface. Just above the green emergency strip lighting is the alternating yellow and black warning section that you're in a a security area. And uh, to behave with decorum. Mm. I'm behaving with decorum. And the doors on the left and the right, are they open or closed? As I'm... They are closed and they do not appear to be tampered with. Uh, the door panels are still dimly lit like they should be right, to not disrupt night vision. So that it, you can't read the numbers on your eyepiece because of the lighting. Uh, but the computer puts an overlay over for what the, what the keys are supposed to be. Right. So I'm going to pass them just kind of glancing at the uh, glancing at Buddy and and, um, and Geek, you know, because I've heard what they're supposed to do. And I'm heading towards the larger pile of debris, which is also floor to ceiling. The, the pile of debris at the end of the hallway by the, yeah, by the bridge right. looks like it should look if you built yourself a barricade and it goes right, floor yeah. to ceiling. This hallway is wide enough for someone to flank Baxter. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Baxter, what's the status on that barricade? Any way through it? Well, if you take it apart piece by piece, you tear those doors and let's do this. Oh, do you it's- got the uh, this one? Uh, I, I, I got the door, but... Uh, uh, do we turn down the barricade, Sarge? Let's wait till we clear these, these two rooms, and then we'll take care of that. All right. So ready room one first? Right. Okay. Because the I'm ship good. is on security lockdown, the door is locked. Oh. Geek, you're up. And I move back to... Get clean uh, line of fire to the to the door while Geek opens it. Does this need a com check roll? Yes. Okay. It does. All right. So I've got five wits, two com tech, plus one stress die. And two successes and a five on the stress die. So I clip in and should I be able to open it? Yeah. 
Is there anything you'd like to use that additional success for? Uh, if I'm encountering the same thing on the right hand room, I'd like to not have to roll for it. Nice. Like they use the same passcode. <laughs> okay. So it flicks from red to green. The door is unlocked and can be opened. So I'm looking at Bodhi to basically say, you say when. I don't think <laughs> I need to say it. Right, uh, go. Boom. Okay. Door slides. It's dark inside. As soon as you enter, the lights come on. It's almost blinding. This is a bright white room, right? It has a long, almost conference table, but it would also double as officer's lunch table, also double as map room, whatever is required. And displayed up on the screens on the wall are mission reports for your former squad members, hmm. all of which are flagged as deceased, heavy trauma, recovery not possible, except for Dwayne Hicks. Right, so I go in and, you know, sweep the corners and, you know. Talk to us, Bodie. So I'll go in and, and sweep both corners. Okay, the room is yes. unoccupied. All right, so clear. And then I, you know, take a glance at the monitors and make note of that. Uh, it's only Corporal Hicks. Oh, what a clusterfuck. <laughs> but again, move it. So gotta so try and got... stop this the stop before see if see if that guy's still alive. Can I get an observation right. check from Corporal Rios, please? All right. So my observation is three, but I have a panic die. So we'll see what yeah. happens. Oh, thank God. Just one success. Okay. <laughs> there is a notation, not with the marine readouts but with the associate personnel they don't get a large scale combat readout and it notes that bishop is still functional but there's an interrogative about system damage any civilian readouts here no no civilian readouts are listed okay. uh, we got a functioning synthetic as well uh, sarge all right, well, let's see if we can uh, bring them home. Let's go. Yes, yeah, as, as soon as uh, Bodhi said clear, I immediately headed for my door. Okay. I'm going to open it. Somebody want to, somebody ready for me? Baxter is up there with you. So. Yeah. Ready, Baxter? All right. Okay. Pop. Okay. Same Switch. thing. Switches from red. To green, the door is able to be opened. Opens as soon as you leave the ready room, the ready room light goes out, right? But the systems inside continue to function. Inside the mother access node, the lights slowly come up, not to pure white, but to a more of an off white, right? And the hallway is very na narrow. It'd be very difficult for Baxter to negotiate down this hallway in full gear. Okay. And it leads to a seat, which is currently facing you. Empty. Empty. The rest Found of the mother. room is round. All right. So let's let's have uh, Greek get in there. Uh, Baxter uh, and Bodhi, let's start taking down that barricade so we can access the bridge. All right. Cameras. Is there any way from, is it possible from here for me to get eyeballs into the bridge? I don't know well, if there's cameras. <laughs> that's right. You don't know if there's cameras. 
All right, I want to find out. So that's the first thing I'm going to try to do, see if there's any type of any type of eyeballs I can get on the bridge or on the other side of this barricade. Do you want to watch me work? <laughs> pulling, pulling objects up. Wouldn't be the first time, Greek. Okay. So the young private sits in the chair. Sure, as long as it's not dirty. It's like it pristine. didn't have beautiful. I check it though before I sit down. Sure. Wait, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, as soon as you sit down, it begins to move back under its own power. This is not unexpected, and yep. it rotates to face an array of hardened terminals. Mm-hmm. Right. So very, very simple, uh, very low tech, high tech. Right. And you're facing a a very simple login, which seems to require biometrics. Okay, which I'm not going to have. Um, so I need to get around it. So let's do that. All right. So you begin. I'm going to check in with you in a bit. Yep. In the hallway, what's going on? We're trying to take down the barricade. To, uh... hey. Is this a silent operation, or are you just taking it down and passing stuff back as fast as possible? I think that's how we'd handle it, right? Which Because which if the barricade's here, here nobody, I mean, if, if there's somebody in there, they've been holed up for 17 days or, well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we'll just, we'll just take it down quickly. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm keeping, I'm keeping my on the motion tracker. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, I have one last question about the distribution of the individual pieces of the barricade. What are you doing with them? Mm, is it possible to just move them? Mm, the door to mother. Put them, I guess, one side. Yeah. Left and right walls. Yeah. They don't 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 clog up the. Uh, yeah, the main hallway. Yeah. And pocketing, and you know, the guys are pocketing the juicier stuff they find. You know. Girly mags, ration bars. Time for that. <laughs> I have one last question. We came with a squad of 12. How many of them are with you? Yeah, I'm sure we left sure, a squad. So, so let's ship. have yeah, two with us and two and six at the Mantis. Is that yeah. what we're saying? Yeah. Let's okay. 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 So then, guys, what are you doing with the... Uh, just passing it down the side of the corridor. Yeah. Right on the sides. Yeah. You know, if there's two other fellas, no, no, I'm, I'm not helping. I'm holding the smart gun. Somebody's got to watch this freaking operation. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, I'm in there. I'm Let in there stick. with the other two guys and I'm, and I'm working and we're just going on one side, right? We're just like, uh, just trying to clear yeah. one side, right? To see if we can. Right. Cause the barricade is out a bit from the door. Right. Okay. As you are working, you can feel just a little bit of refreshing, cooling air blowing. And that's when this other idea clicks in that the the air up here has been really still. And in the ceiling over your head, someone has very quickly welded just a a random piece of metal over the air vent. But one corner isn't welded and a jet of air is just creating this pinpoint of breeze um, for where you're standing on the side. I am assuming we had some sort of deck plan for the Sulaco, which we would have studied. You've been on ships like this your whole career. It's right. Right. Uh, and do the vents go up all the way into the the bridge? I suppose there's vents everywhere. Right. And just like just like every other section, they seal right. in case of breach, and, and uh, so you can seal right. all kinds of sections. Uh, right. So as we're working, I'll I'll you know I'll say back to to Rock, uh, Sarge. They've they've welded shut one of the uh, ventilation ducts. Uh, I guess there were 
somebody was trying to move through the ventilation system. Do you think I could have heard that from where I'm sitting? Sure. Unless so I'm going to yell up. Unless you're with I'm going to yell. Oh, that's right. We got comms, right? We got headsets. Yeah. Does it look like Marine work or pirate work? I don't know. Looks like you're a welding job. It's a, it's a hasty job. It could have been anybody. Yes. This so, is the weirdest response to a pirate attack I've ever seen. Right. In, in about five minutes, you get a path cleared, and the material that's cleared away is squared away so that there's still access for one person to move down the hallway between the two doors. Once you get past the ready room door, it's normal wide hallway until you get to the original mess of that other right. barricade. Right. So now, I stand. Go on. Sorry. I stand go by on. the door and I, and I get on the, on the, on the headset. A geek. I, I'm guessing this door is locked as well. We're going to need you here to breach the door. Uh, I, I got I'm trying to get past this biometrics. I'd like to, I'd like us to look in there. If there's cameras, let's get eyeballs in there before we open any more doors. I mean, this is this, this was barricaded for a reason. Yeah, the question is whether we're trying to keep something in or out. Why did you got on that computer? Working on it. All right. So, I'm 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 sorry. I'm apologizing to you from the bottom of my heart, but your difficulty modifier is three. Okay. So I will get rid of three dice. It leaves me with uh, four plus a stress. So you should have just gotten rid of the stress. Son of a monkey. <laughs> uh oh. No, there it is. And no successes. Even better. All right. Even Panic. better. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> All right. Roll 1d6 and add your stress level to the result. Okay. So my stress level is one. All right. One plus four, so five all day. That's a five. So you're keeping it together. You managed to keep your nerves in check. Barely. Barely is the operative yeah. word. Come on, geek. This Get thing's on it. this is this thing's giving me hell here. Um and here's I can't why push this, right? No. Here's why. Tampering with mother can lead to all sorts of problems with the ship. Right. This is a ship of war. The ship might declare everyone with the same signals as enemy. Yeah. Or it may begin to start, you know, erasing sensitive material. Guys, I don't feel I, I'm not going to be able to get through this safe. We're, we're just going to have to go in. Uh, I'll get the door. God damn it. Get your ass over here and do it. This is the kind of thing that gets Marines killed. Everybody kick the dog lights down. Come on, kid. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to pop pop out of the chair um, yep. and then head over to the door. All right. So it, you stand up, right? And the chair automatically, you know, returns to its original position, turning around oh, to receive up. a new seat. So it's now it's blocking you in there. <laughs> I thought I was going to hit the chair to like, get like like the exit pr process right exactly but you know nerves okay all right so did now i'm blocked in did anybody see it <laughs> no well we're waiting for the door so the chair well, moves a, out of the way i'm at two stress now right because of the panic yeah, yeah. you're oh, no, wait, you're now you, you at panic five. you you don't get an extra stress if you oh you don't okay I don't think so. So I'm still at the one stress. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to head over to the door. Okay. Thank you. Shaking. So again, you know, as soon as you leave the mother node, the light in there goes out. 
At this time, the door closes and they have carved a path or they've disassembled a path through the barricade and uh, up to the terminal. But this time, the terminal is not lit. Okay. It doesn't look damaged or, or anything, but it has uh, the other terminals, you know, are, it's very easy to see their glow out of the corner of your mm -hmm. eye. This one is not lit. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to say anything. I'm just going to go and see what I need to do to get it open or unlocked. Okay. Roll. This one needs a roll. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my five plus two plus one stress. And I've got two successes, one on the stress die. Okay. So I think I'm a little amped up. That's allowing me to get through this pretty, pretty well. Okay. So this is the, these are the bridge doors, right? This is an area of the ship that's fairly close to the skin of the outside. And although it's an armored section, these doors are heavier than mother's door and the ready room door and all that sort of stuff. So there's a, a movement, right? There's a, an unlocking audible heavy, you know, like, and then an outer section of door opens, but there's still a, a layer of door inside. Right? And then the door slides back and the inner door slides back. And inside it's completely dark, except for the laser tracer, which is illuminating through that darkness against the barricade and the sound of a sentry gun erupts. Die for cover! Cover! <laughs> <laughs> Geek has the cover of the doorway. He's in front of the, the panel. He has seven dice of cover. Baxter and Bodhi have the boxes, the barrels, and all that nonsense. They have five dice of cover. As does the rest of the squad. However, this barrage of auto fire will degrade the cover very quickly. The cover of just uh, the barrier plus or the cover? Armor ahead, plus cover dice. Yeah. Armor plus covers. So that's should 11 be 11 dice. dice. Oh, God. That's six plus seven. So do we all roll, or is it going to yes, shoot please. us first? Or yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, it's shooting us now, man. Yeah. Game over. And game <laughs> over, man. And because it's uh, it's on armor, it's on it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't necessitate panic. So you don't roll your stress dice. Just right. roll the just just roll the armor. Yeah. Ooh, nice roll, Bodie. Yeah. So we have so we have five, right? And you've got seven. Each. Yeah. All right. Stupid. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I, got, I got two. You got two? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. I took a picture of my role. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> For posterity. Because um, I don't want I don't want to say how many dice I'm rolling and how many successes I got. Oh. But here we go. The Damage coming downrange towards you all on this initial moment of combat. You are, uh, and I remind me, I wanted to tell you something. You are all taking minus what you just rolled, five. So five minus five is zero. Yep. Okay. So I'm That's the two. way I like it. <laughs> You're one. taking two. Rock's taking three. one, and God, I Baxter's taking three. Right. Oh. <laughs> so 
So imagine where you are in the hallway in the dark, right? The doors slide open. Only, only geek and the person closest to him, who I assume is Leo, are able to see that second of the red laser tracking light before the barricade begins to explode in splinters. So there's pieces of hard plastic, there's pieces of hard metal, right? There's wiring, there's bullets filling the entire hallway and impacting and destroying the barricade all the way down the other end of, of the hallway, right? So heavy, heavy impacts, which are catching armor, which are catching helmets, right? And blowing people into the walls, blowing them off their feet, right? And this is just the first, you know what a sentry gun does, right? This was the first. Barrage. first zoom, right? Everybody who took damage takes one stress. Okay. Just and in you, case. you are under auto fire. You're oh. receiving auto fire. You take one stress. Because okay, you're pinned so down, yeah. so it's addition. So two, so two, two stress, stress all day. Oh, great. So, so everybody else is, is under fire. It takes one stress. That's me as well. So, hmm. Okay. That's exactly what Baxter says. Son of a bitch. Times. <laughs> so, would I know? Like, is this standard? To have a central yeah. gun at a bridge? Is that something no. I would know? No, no, no one would. Not, not and, no, no, no. Okay, Someone had so, to drag this up here from the armory all, all right. the way from deck 10. Right. So if if we're pinned down, if that's the effect, uh, then we need to make panic rolls. Yes. Now? Now. Right now. With the... Uh, yeah. with, the, uh, with, with, the, the new, uh, with all the new stress added in, yeah. Yeah, D, D6 and, plus three for me. So I am at a five. Five total. Oh, that's nice. Six plus two is eight. Oh. Eight. You're shaking. All agility at minus two. Please make a note. I rolled a four. You rolled a four. You're holding it together. You've been under five before. Five's, four. five's oh, holding it together as well, right? Yes. Now let's see. Okay, I've got a damn it. Seven. All together. Your Seven stress hundred. level. Yeah. Oh. Oh geez. Your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you, which is everybody, increases by one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what happens. Keep your yeah. shit together, Baxter. <laughs> Son of a bitch. God damn it. Yes, <laughs> like just says the the uh the and now swearing. I'd like to ask you for initiative. Oh, that's all nice. right, all righty, fine. Who will um, I? Who will I draw for first? Wh wh whoever's on your screen, do it yeah, by you know. Clockwise. I, 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 I can. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, well, the first one on my screen is actually me. Ooh. So I have a four. Okay. Okay. So I will change my change my name to Leo Baxter. Leo Baxter four. Four. The other three Leo Baxters died. <laughs> well, I tell you, Leo soon. Baxter sixty nine. <laughs> right. Number four is about to die as well. But you know, all right. Interestingly, now, uh, in Asia, four carries the connotation of death because it has the same <laughs> pronunciation as the word for death. Uh, so when you get an elevator, it goes one, two, three, F. Uh, oh, it skips the the four. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I, I find well, that appropriate. Yeah, at this juncture, yes. All right, Kaminsky has a three. Three. So Sarge is on a three. Geek is on a five. And Mr. Rios is on a seven. Okay. Nice. And I assume we're drawing for somebody else at least one other thing, right? Oh, the... The, 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 sentry, the, the sentry gun gets... To, to enjoy Overwatch. Mm, yeah, so. Right. So while it's an Overwatch, it acts when we act. Gets yeah, a plus two, you, increases the stress. Nobody moves. Is this like Forbidden Lands where we can exchange cards? Yes. 
So let me ask uh, regarding the field of fire of the sentry gun. It's standing right, like if if they are, if I stand in the middle of the doorway, I'm looking straight at the gun. Exactly. Right? So there are okay. there are safe corners. Okay. And did it demolish the uh, barricade? The barricade uh, started out at five for cover, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm decreasing it by the value of the gun. So five, three. Okay, go. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, the, the reason I'm asking is I'm, I'm wondering if there's going to be a clear way to, if we stick to the walls, can we move to the conference room? Uh, that's one question. And the other question is, do we know if there's a ventilation duct leading into the bridge, right? So we could get elevation on the gun. Would we know uh, that? Okay, so I'll answer them in order. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just instantly something that you're aware of, right? The field of fire is such that you can get people safely into a corner to not take fire. But they will take fire if they try and edge down that wall to get to okay. the ready room or edge down the wall to get to the computer core. Yeah, we, we got to get to those corners where it can't shoot us and then throw crap until it runs out of bullets, which could take some time. The second answer is there has to be ventilation ducts into the bridge. Into the it's probable because of the simplicity of engineering that the duct over your head goes Connects. into the bridge. It's You currently have the problem of the grating being mostly welded shut. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, I was just thinking because we could go into the conference room and then go up from there. But if we can't get to the conference room, it's the same problem. Uh, but that's good thinking, Baxter. <laughs> get back, get back to the corners. And so, I, <laughs> well, we got to run forward to the corners. You know what I mean? Like we got to get to the sides of the door, the door, yeah, the, gotta, the bridge you door. Charge, charge forward to get to. We got to charge so. forward. Yeah, charge forward. So geeks already in yeah. the corner. Right. Oh, yeah. So I so. guess we can we can imagine that he's hit in the in the shoulder because his shoulder's projecting around the door frame and it gets blown. Yep. Yep. And as far as we know, does does the sentry gun shoot movement? They can be set for a number of things. They can right. be set so. for movement only, movement and infrared. Okay. So playing dead, it's not going to work. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Is Sorry. there any debris near me that I can throw? You are surrounded by debris. All right. So I want. Uh, you're you're on a five, man. Is, isn't isn't the Sarge up first? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just asking the question. Oh, debris. All right. I just so can I get to the cover with, with one fast action or would I need to use both? Yes, you can get to the cover with a fast action. All right, so that's my fast action. And in terms of... Uh, nobody's lost control, right? Nobody's panicked to a level that they lo they've lost control? No. Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. So for I think the first thing we need to do is figure out whether we're switching cards, right? Who's going to go first? I mean, unless there's, unless there's something that somebody wants to do right away, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So, okay. So, all right. So, if I'm first, I'll 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 dash for the cover, and I'll. Um, does it go does, low, high, high, low to high, or high to low? It goes uh, in order: one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah. So low to yeah. high. Got it. Well, okay, and uh, okay, and then we have a clear path to the cover. So is anybody going to have to like roll something to get to the cover? No. No. All right. It's what you do next that matters when you have to step into the line of fire. Right. So. 
Right. Okay. So I think my action for now uh, will be just to to take cover. You know, order the guys. Hey, everybody, get to those corners, uh, and uh, and keep an eye on the guys. See see how they're doing. I think that that's um, that's all I'm going to do in my action. Right. Kaminsky, geek, you've been shot. Yeah. Baxter's next, right? Oh, Baxter's next. Sorry. Yeah. Geek's been shot. Jesus shot. Christ, we're going we're gonna to get shot. We're going to chop the hamburger. So I'm running towards the, one of the corners, yelling at Geek, close the effing door. Close the effing door. <laughs> Just clearly, clearly I'm, I'm, I'm losing my crap a little bit. My usual stoic manner. That's for shaken. <laughs> Because we're taking fire from a very sophisticated, very good weapon. The only thing better than me. So I'm just running full tilt with a litany of, of expletives. <laughs> the end. All right. I'm trying to close it. Okay. You've been shot. Baxter's screaming his head off. Kaminsky just ran down the hallway. Diving into cover. Comtech. All right. So two you plus have five. You have an injury. Okay. Do you not? Yes, you do. Uh, yeah, I've got. I went from four health to two health. Yeah. So a uh, one die penalty, please. Okay. Oof. All right, so it'll be five plus one plus four stress die. Spiral of death has you want, good, you want good news or bad news? Yes. Uh, bad news first. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to give you the good news, Sarge. We got two successes. Yeah. But I need to roll panic. So roll panic first, because if yeah. you roll very nice. high, it, you might not get to complete the action. Okay, so seven, three plus my four stress. Oh, seven is nice. So your stress level increases to five now, and everybody else is in range, which is all of us, I guess. Which is all of you, increases, increases by one. Increases by one. Yeah, so I think this might be the first time I've seen Baxter freak out. And if Baxter's freaking out, it's freaking me the fuck out, too. <laughs> So I'm right there at, at seven with Baxter right now. Oh my God. But you close the door, but you succeed. I've got two successes. So I would assume, yeah, I close, close the door. Um, and would you like my it to extra be quick? <gasps> um, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, it depends. It depends on who it might hit. Yes. Of course. I want it to be quick. No, or do you okay. want to impress me instead? Impress that. Wow. He's closing that door really well. <laughs> Damn, I this think pretty, I actually... I, 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 I did not roll enough successes to impress you, Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> this particular panic roll is called Nervous Twitch. Right. So imagine right, the, the effect. Right. So our highest level of panic is trembling, which is Corporal Bodhi Rios, who is <laughs> trembling in the teeth, short-range teeth of this fearsome weapon, which can shoot from one end of the Sulaco to the other. Okay, but did the closed door? Did the, the door, door close? The door, that heavy, heavy door closes. Yeah, closes. Okay. okay Son so. of a bitch. So, All right. Good who's hit? Good, who's hit? So me, as everything comes down, I think that's the first time I completely recognize this, my situation. Um, I'm like, uh, me. I think we all got winged except you, Corporal. So I go uh, uh, to Geek, and I pull out uh, uh, an injector uh, syringe. Or I pull out syringe. This is like like retro future, right? So it's just a syringe. I get the the thing out and and jab him with a dose of Naproleve. This will take care of the pain, soldier. And so Naproleve wipes out all your stress. Oh, so your stress goes down to zero. Let me double check that, but I just read it. So, but Sergeant Kaminsky, I would like a command roll from you because the squad has fragmented. They've gone to the four corners of the hallway. We've got people, you know, 
ducked and covered and they're all having experienced panic. Um, well, and, and all right, so my three command dice plus four stress dice. There we go. All right, that is uh, one six and zero ones. All right, all right. So you succeed. So, Rock, take control of your crew. All right, ladies, settle down. He <laughs> got the door closed. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Coming over to so, so that Bodhi can put a band aid on you. Baxter, what's your stress level again? My, my wife's uh, looking at me like I'm insane. Uh, uh, that poor, <laughs> poor stress. My panic level is seven. And, you're, uh, you're, okay. But my yeah. stress level is four. My stress, yeah, level stress level is four. Okay. Yes, I miss me. Did you clear uh, me out, Bodhi? Yeah. So you okay. zero stress and your panic stopped. So, you know, and you're. Whatever you had, I think, is gone. Guys, I need um, to step away for a second. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tick three out of four health damage. Oh, Jesus. Uh, it's messy. Did you use all of it on him? <laughs> yeah, no, I could. I could. Uh, I got four doses left so we need to manage this although stress level four is pretty stressed out but uh it doesn't matter <laughs> i could use uh, a bandage though maybe take one of the bullets out okay, i suppose so, i go right through yeah, so you know I, I start i start you know tending to him but here's the deal mechanically speaking if you're not broken if you're not at zero i can't really roll anything to help you yeah, what no, I can true, do true. is either remove all the stress or we can banter and take a break, like a breather of, of at least one turn, five to 10 minutes. And that should bring everybody's stress level down by two. So I think that's more manageable. Uh, it just costs question. you time. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Is, did the gun stop firing automatically or do we hear bullets slamming into the glass doors? Right. The, the doors close and... And it stops. You can no longer hear it firing. Yeah. Okay. It's not chewing its way through the through the bulkhead. Is there a mechanical, um, a negative mechanical effect of the napoline? Uh, yeah, if you hit, if you hit, you if you hit twice. Somebody twice on a on a same shift. I think it is. It'll give you a negative one agility. But first oh. dose is, is free. It all just is. Wipes and does it do the... anything anything for the health or is it just the stress no i stress. was saying if we uh, if we take one turn to rest everybody regains one health and given my talent of banter uh everybody uh, gets two stress down right so if we take one turn which is five to ten minutes we can recuperate one hit point of damage one health and two stress go down so from four i'd go down to two but you're at zero you're you're you're, yeah. you're fine yeah. yeah and and i've i might i've slid my back down and i'm sitting at this point right. um after getting my shot and just kind of right. <sighs> glad i got the door closed so i wave off the pain killer oh, that's fine that's fine just Suck it up, soldier. <laughs> say some say some funny crap for a couple minutes there. Yeah. <laughs> for, for us, come on, start bantering. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, that was too bad it didn't hit your head, right? Then it would have been just fine. Well, you <laughs> the know, hardest part of your armor. Yeah. <laughs> so I just flew all the way from Orion, and boy, my arms tired. You know? <laughs> uh, 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 Man, that thing was more pissed off than my ex-wife. Oh uh, God! Damn. Uh, uh, which one? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny there, Private. <laughs> Which NPC said that? Nolan. <laughs> Nolan. Uh, Nolan. <laughs> I'm, cha I'm changing my buddy to Nolan. I'm I think it was number number three. Uh, I think that I said number three, Nolan. She's the worst. <laughs> Nolan's eye in the ready room door, you know, like. He's feeling a little squirrely. He wants to get out of the hallway. All right. Huh, all right. Well, 
I don't think we're getting to the bridge anytime soon, unless we go through the ducts. Drop on that thing from behind. I hope it's not swinging at full 360. Yeah. I don't think we have a guarantee, do we? Sarge, I well, think that's a good well, idea. Some... Well, yeah, well, well, that's a good question. Would we be familiar whether these things can swivel to shoot straight up? You know everything about these if you have heavy weapons training. Which we do, right? Which and Baxter yeah. does. Baxter does. Certainly Baxter does. Yeah. Baxter, so, they shoot up. Uh, can, can you say one of those things to shoot up, you know, to swivel in any direction? Yeah. Um, yeah. They're yeah, they, they're not just horizontal. They're monsters. Even if we drop on it, good chance that somebody knows what the hell they're doing. This thing is just a circle of death. Yeah, well, right. but if we go two approaches, we could open one team going out, one team stays behind. We open the doors, right. we wave some piece of debris, we throw some debris so it'll shoot, and we stay behind the doors, right? And, and somebody, somebody else shoot us it. from above. Yeah. Shoots I got door it? duty. Right. <laughs> yeah. can Anyone we, who can sets we... up a sentry is going to choose their their select field of fire. Um, so if whoever set this one up was sane, they're likely willing to blow holes in the walls of the hallway. They might not be willing to blow holes through the, the viewports. Yeah, or the oh, that's or well, the viewports. Yeah. Can we uh, can we get the that hatch unwelded, or I mean, can we get that hatch torn down? Is there a way to do that by main strength? Or was the welding so good that we should look for another hatch? Well, maybe we have, maybe one of our squad mates, uh, Nolan, or I don't know, Cameron. Graham. Or no, somebody, Graham. yeah. Graham. <laughs> Graham. <laughs> maybe Graham has a uh, 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 welding torch. The uh, cutting torch is the name of the gear right. item. The cutting torch, yeah. And it'd be yeah. very easy to, un to undo what was done. And that gives us a convenient five to 10 minutes to rest up while he takes care of that. So, all right, everybody gains a health, yeah, and okay. decrease two stress. Two stress, oh, good. I'm all standing right. up feeling pretty good at this point. <laughs> okay, well, then you can crawl through the damn. Oh, I got door room. duty. <laughs> you learn how to you you learn how to work the door, and I'll learn how to crawl. All right. Well, the real trick now is, can I get my smart gun up there and do? That's and probably too big. <laughs> that's what she said. Geek. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive or me. Or so you've heard. <laughs> but she's known to be polite. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I'm, and paid well. That's <laughs> paid well. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I need something. I need something with some serious armor piercing in order to trick and disable that thing. Otherwise, I'm just behind it trying to turn it off. I wish I, I could do. Yeah. yeah, we need you up there. So well, you don't need the you don't need the the heavy weapon skill. To, there is not, you, you're using the same range combat skill, right? You just have the expertise. Is that correct? Um, I'm guessing, yeah, because I've got heavy weapons training. Because you know, I'm more yeah, weapon specialist you, on the on the smart right, gun. But, but one of one of the other one of the other guys could shoot the, uh, the smart gun. The smart gun, yeah, without penalty, right? They just wouldn't have your advantages. If worst comes to worst. Right. Yeah, is that so, correct? Is that correct? Yeah, they have so, far fewer dice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think what we're gonna do is uh, uh, you're gonna switch uh, weapons with Bodhi. Bodhi will take the smart gun, and, and I'll go with you in there. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So the access to the to the vent is is opened, which also gives you a fairly large sheet of metal which might give you two points of cover nice and 
Baxter switches with Bodhi for weapons. Yeah. Do you remember how to use an M41A Pulse Rifle Marine? <laughs> I, I give him this look that would just melt stone. <laughs> <laughs> don't even, don't even and... answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan's been standing on pieces of the barricade in order to to undo the welding. So there's a a, a flight of stairs leading up. Also, the event. also right, just to right. make a note, because we spent one turn, uh, effects of panic go away. So I, I stop yes. trembling. Yes. Uh, you know, you get it under control. Yeah. All right, so that means when we're rolling our next series of panics, we don't have to start at our current level. The level no, we, we at. start at the same. We keep the stress, uh, but we don't okay. start. We, yeah, you don't start with a seven panic or whatever it okay. is. Yeah, oh, good. We can start that over again. Great. But if yeah. another panic roll had been triggered tied to this one, right, in right. the same sequence of events, right, then it keeps building. Then, then it keeps yeah. building. That's correct. Okay, good. So it's not a fresh, fresh panic roll each time. It's a yeah. cumulative. Yeah. That's an interesting mechanical yeah. thing where you have to keep track of the highest that yeah. you've yeah. rolled so far. So that's an important. Yeah. So if now you I'm roll less than do. that, it just it just goes up by one. by one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. Now there's, now there's a chance for me to roll like a four or five or a six instead of an eight. That's right. Nice. Okay. Good. Well, then I'm going to look the other way once I'm in the, in the event. The other the ways that I'm not going to crawl just to make sure there's nothing there. Like, I swear I'd never get in one of these again. And then start crawling towards the bridge. Okay. All right. So we'll arrange ourselves by both sides of the doorway with pieces of debris. And so the plan is that when Geek hits the door, we start throwing the boxes, right? So it doesn't, it, it, we're outside its field of fire right. is the idea. Okay. So inside the vent, right where you expect it to be, Flush with the bulkhead is a you know a closed iris style airlock to block the the vent. There's no trigger mechanism here in the vent. So I can't get past that. I can't trigger it. Jeez. <sighs> Damn, I got a freaking door here, geek. It would have to be done, yes, by someone at a terminal such as in the bridge or another command center the, I, what, you got a closed closed iris yeah you go back to the mother all right and uh we'll take up positions here so i'm just warning everybody me breaking through that biometrics could create more problems than it solves how how thick is this freaking iris I'm like wrapping on it. I'll see pretty this thick. how how that's pretty thick. Oh god damn it. Because my impulse is to freaking, you know, I'm, I'm taking out the pulse rifle already. Shoot right through this goddamn thing. That's, I'd best that's here, go right through that. In boot camp yeah. for the Marines. Near the middle of the film, all the stupid yeah. ways to die. Yeah, that's is your... that is that moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, don't yeah. <laughs> Hey Rock, do you do you want me to bust through this? We get, we need to get into that bridge or or that or this or the station will be destroyed. Okay. Plus, do we have we think we have at least one marine who's who's uh, who's alive. On and this. we hear the voice of Mother saying, two hours, one minute until impact." All right, I'm going to get back in the chair, hit the button, so I get pulled in. Yep. Um, still difficulty three? It is. It has not increased from that high difficulty. Okay, so I am still at seven dice, but no stress. Yeah. What's harder? No stress. All right, I'm going to need to push this. I got no successes. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. And you take one stress. stress because you're pushing yep. and you add it immediately to the push roll. Yep. All right, look at that. Say a good mistake. Two successes, baby. All right. And no onesies. Yeah. 
So use okay. that boost to to keep access to mother, right? To to make sure you don't have to bypass her again. Yeah, I like that a lot. Works for Mama's me. Boy. All right. I'm, so this I'm time, in. you know, with your with your head clear, right? The hallway into mother has a variety of physical switches and access points, right? And there is a way to trick the system to accept a new user. Which Break. it has. Done. Captain. <laughs> That's the only way you're ever getting to Captain Geek. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> Over the comms. All right. Gu guys, I'm in. Um, Good job. That's how you do it. I, I, I assume the sentry is not networked, right? So I can't use mother to turn the sentry off. Right. Okay. Um, but can now I. Mother I is can... announcing. Right. One hour, 52 minutes until impact. All right. So let's go, Skip. We... I'm, I'm, I'm shaving up there waiting for the. Yeah. Let's go, Skipper. <laughs> so one, can, can I get eyes on the bridge? Sure. Okay. What do I see? In the mother terminal, right, one of the screens gives you a wireframe readout of the bridge, indicates there are no personnel there. All that means is there's no one with a tracker there, right? There could be a whole party of hula dancers Pirates. in there. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It indicates that, uh, you know, all kinds of all kinds of data, you know, hull integrity is, is intact, uh, systems nominal. There's an unusual power drain. And so maintenance has been flagged. Okay. And then as for a visual feed, it's dark. So it's that very blue, grainy, distorted, low light camera from a fisheye lens just in one corner. Uh, there's a certain amount of privacy afforded, of, afforded to the, the flight crew that no one else gets. Um, and there is someone in there. There's a, a huddled form. There are command couches everywhere in here, you know, that you know, they have pulled down uh, braces in case of loss of gravity. Um, someone is huddled in front of the central seat, literally huddled, you know, gripping it. It's impossible to determine if they are alive or not. Rock, they don't have a tracer on it, but they're, they're, there's somebody in there. Are they manning the gun? No. No, I, I can't tell if they could be dead or hiding. Um, can, can you, can you uh, see if you can get Mother to maybe fire some thrusters to stop this tub? Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to I, – I can also potentially – Get, see if I we can talk to our friend too. Maybe our friend can turn off that uh, sentry. Sure, but let's. But if we can stop this tub from approaching from from impact, that'd be our, our first priority. All right. Everything else. And open this door, and I'll go talk to him myself. Right. <laughs> I have a few things to say. <laughs> am I am I able to uh, do any type of? This, this is mother. You can access the entire ship from here. All you right. just have to. All right. So I, I, I want, I want mother to take, take some, take some action to, to take us off this trajectory. So that's okay. what I want mother to do. Mother informs you that to warm up the engines, right. will take 30 minutes. Okay. Let's and start that up. the process. Right. Perfect. While watching the screen, I, I want to try to get a voice in there. Am I able to? No, this is just a security system. So there's there's no way from, from the mother terminal for me to talk into the room. Right. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of looking uh, at Baxter's boots. Come on. All right. Let me, let me open the iris. <laughs> That's all you're Baxter's looking at. ass is not that sexy. Come on. <laughs> Baxter, you ready? 
Boots are more interesting, yeah. All right. (laughs) Flick, turn, flick. Okay. Iris opens. It's doubled because, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Exactly. Exactly. Lights come up very dim on the other side. All right, I'm crawling towards to the where I know the next grate's going to be or should be. Yeah, Bridge. and it's been welded shut. <sighs> oh, of course it has. Uh, you know what, uh, Graham? Open the door. Oh well, no. Hold up, hold up. Hold, oh. yeah. hold up, just hold off one second. Uh, so it's so it's welded shut. We need another you know. welding torch. So pass the torch, no, right? No, yeah. No, yeah, not only that, but but, but we need a uh, the time. Well, well, we, the engines are being it. warmed up, right? So we, yeah, we got thirty minutes before anything happens. Yeah. yeah so I'll yeah. I'll get, I'll get out and I'll have Graham go up there and bring the, the torch to to back there. Oh, jeez, give me the damn so, torch. Give me the glasses. You know, Okay. You know what? I, I mean, if we all get behind cover and we open the door, we can talk to this guy who's in there. Yeah, Over the go machine gun. Yeah, no, the machine gun is not going to fire if it doesn't see anything, right? If he opens the door. All right. So while you're working, that we can try that. I'm right, because we're the... outside I'm safe the field the... of fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm... I have no trouble opening that door. <laughs> I'm way yeah, out of the field and... of fire. <laughs> yeah, and. and... And while they're debating whether or not to open the door, I'm already starting to cut the, cut the, you know, thing. Okay. Right. So okay. when the door opens, does the machine gun activate immediately? Is anybody moving in front of it? No. Then no. All but right. It's, so I open, yeah. It's panning and scanning. Right. So I go, hi, uh, hi, the bridge. Uh, this is a you, uh, you, USCMC. Colonial Marines. Colonial Marines. Colonial Marines. We're here to help. Is that you, you uh, Hicks? <laughs> you can hear someone murmuring. Right. It's too far and too distorted to make out what they are saying. It right. sounds like someone crying to themselves. Okay. So I want to uh snap them into discipline because I'm assuming it's Hicks. So Corporal, this is Lance Corporal. Uh I mean this is I'm Corporal too. So I guess we're same rank. Uh uh Corporal Hicks, this is Corporal Rios of the Colonial Marines. We're here to rescue you. Um uh we need your help, man. Uh, get on it. And so I'm trying to command him to see if I can control their panic because sure. I can, yeah. with a command roll, you can yes. de- panic decrease, action, yeah. decrease yeah. panic, right? Yeah, you, you, can, you can make them regain their senses. You can't, you can't exactly. decrease the, the, the stress. But... Right. Uh, stop panic. Uh, return them to, them to their senses, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going so, to apply a difficulty on this because, as you sure. know, they may have been here for quite a while. And uh, so it's going to have a difficulty of two. Okay. So it takes two dice away. Can, and I have can, two can, we, can we give assistance? Uh, I believe you're in the duct. No, I got out. And so no one could go up and bring the, the thing, torch. the yeah, torch, sure. and I stayed down. No yeah. reason. Why you cannot? Live. So, so I, I wish I li- listen to the corporal. This is this is Sergeant uh, Kaminsky. We just want to sort this out. See if we can get that gun offline. Get out of here. So okay. you, can, da- you can see sparks, you know, coming down from the ceiling as the welding torch is is working its magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, does that give me an extra assistance dice? All right, so here we go. Survey says no panic, but no success. Now you are hearing something 
that makes a little bit of sense because it has a little bit more volume. And it's just, how does it know how to use a welder? It's just screaming and repeating it over and over and over and over and over again. So much so that the grammar gets tumbled up, but you did hear it in the right order a couple of times. Yeah, so I, I grab the mic and I put it close to my head and say, uh, Geek, do, do you have eyes on that guy? Does he have a, a weapon? He's not doing anything. He's just a ball. Okay, good, good. So I keep trying to talk him down, but I'm not pushing that role. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're getting in there one way or the other. So, <laughs> so the metal grate mm -hmm. falls into the into the bridge area, not too far away from the command couch where this mm -hmm. person is, or it's a it's a man is cowering. Mm -hmm. But there's really no reaction to the fall or the clang. Right? They're obviously in their own world so the, does the gun, gun react yeah no the gun does not no. react so hey, wait. Mike. Uh, uh, stand by baxter let's see if it takes the bait and so i throw a piece of debris into the guns field field right see if, if it picks up the it, bait it fires and blows the debris to to shreds nice. which means it's been set for motion and not set for infrared awesome Awesome. So say when Baxter and we'll, we'll start uh, throwing on his command. We'll start All throwing, right, you know, us, we, we've accumulated a pile of debris just for this purpose. Looking straight down through the grate. If I just jump straight down, will I, will I land in front of the machine behind it on it? You could, you could literally walk up behind it and turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Then I will, I'm going to, I'm going to try to as, um, Deftly as I can get down there. I'm realizing at the one moment I'm going to be going in there defenseless, you know, without a weapon, you know, able to use the weapon. So I've got my, got my, uh, or Bodie's uh, gun on me in 41, whatever it is, and, uh, and uh, go feet first and land. Okay. And be ready to kill this guy in, in a second if, in fact, he makes a move on me. It makes a, a crazy amount of noise, right? I mean, you land on this metal plate. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's all warped exactly. and twisted. So just boom, gun doesn't react. It's just, yeah. it's scanning Starting. down the hallway. All and right. uh, the, the figure doesn't even really flinch, right? Just gripping the, the seat fabric. And uh, like the corpse in the other computer center, it's got all these random patches from different branches of service from different nations and different colonies. And his hair is wild, like crazy ponytail. And, and What do you see, Baxter? Hold on. Turn the gun off. Uh, and going right up to the guy with the pulse rifle, like pointing right at him, grabbing his shoulder. <laughs> Right. So, you, like you let us know. Doors Come open, on, fellas. Sorry. Somebody get somebody get the lights. Good job, everybody. Come on, let's get in there. There's still more Body. than 200 Go. shots left in the. Right. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about yeah. that. That could be useful. Yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> it could be useful. I turn the lights on. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's let's get in there, Bori. I think uh, Baxter's missing his girlfriend there. Yeah. So now you have access to an exterior view, sort of. I mean, it's it's piped in on screens, um, but uh, you know, you, you see the the pirate vessel is tumbling, right? And there's there's trajectory trackers and other equipment inside the bridge, which indicate that uh, unless something happens to the pirate vessel, it it will lightly impact with the orbital facility, but the Sulaco is, is dead on, right? right? And this was on purpose. There's a course laid in mm. right, to send the Sulaco straight into- To ram the- yeah. You gotta be kidding me. Do you mind? Oh, buddy, I just look at him and pulled my hand out. <laughs> 
<laughs> grab, <laughs> grab, 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 grab Betsy, man. Yeah, grab the girlfriend, yeah. And look, go, but like, go right up to this guy and say, okay, give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right the F now. So I go over and I take a look as well, right? I sling my rifle and I pull out a pen light. So as you get the pen light on his face, you see that that comment from Baxter somehow made it through the the fog, right? His eye, right? One of his eyes is all kind of milky, but, you know, that he's trying to make eye contact with Baxter and he just says, oh, please, would you? Uh, Easy, fella. And and he, you said he has the patches. So we're we're thinking. I'm thinking this is one of the pirates again, same as the guy with the chest. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 a uniform. Right, right. Easy, fella. Let's see what you got there. You hurt? Let me take a look. I'm he, a doctor. He is. He's been splashed with something which has melted skin. It's infected. He's been he's been injured and untreated for. Right. Right. So he's here. Just, just sit back on one of these couches here. Let me take a look. And so I'm, I'm going to try and. Uh, he's dehydrated and obviously hasn't eaten. Yeah. So I will, I will, you know, I'm just going to give you something for the pain, and we're going to treat you, get you some water, uh, take it easy. I, well, while he's doing that, I, I'm going to quickly uh, tell our pilot that, that, that in, 30, you know, in 30 minutes or so, we should be able to get some power on this thing so that she won't be there. <laughs> I was beginning yes. to wonder if you were jilting me. <laughs> um, you know, that's Baxter's game, not, not mine. I think you're blushing, Sarge. <laughs> hey. hey, Sarge. you're blushing. Yeah. Looks like the pilots aimed this. This is not, we're not just drifting. They pointed us. They pointed the Saluka at, at the station. This was on purpose. This is insane. Okay. Bodhi. Meaning, you know, for you to ask him why the hell he did that thing. I need Bodhi. You send the, uh, are you piloting this craft before you set up the sentry gun? Where's the rest of your crew? That's something that that registers, and he goes off on a long litany of, you know, first it was Will, right? Yeah, and I, I it, it I, got I, Gene I just, and the ducts. I'll I'll hit him with another. First as an Will, then John Luke. This is crossing the streams, man. Right, Gene. Oh. Gene. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I'll use a nap relief on on him, which means it takes away his pain, takes away his. His uh, stress. Maybe too far gone for that. Like in the mental trauma. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, okay. part of the treatment, I guess. All right. So, obviously, he's a pirate. And as you're waiting for the drug to take effect, as you're, as you're trying to find ways in and around his shortcomings his mental shortcomings you see that he's got you know a similar pouch on his belt as the the corpse that you found right and it's it's full of data transfer equipment right so he's not he's not carrying um, weapons or grenades or anything along those lines he doesn't have huge sled full of stolen weapons or anything like that he's here for information he's here for information so sarge i don't think these are pirates they look like pirates this is some sort of corporate espionage some sort of black ops but we've seen yeah, it sounds like it, but we've seen two of these bastards. No sign of a firefight. We got a whole squad of Marines down. Shit just ain't adding up, son. Yeah. We should check. Uh, uh, and, he's uh, got, geek? He, yeah. and he doesn't even have an empty holster. He doesn't have like magazines in his pockets. Right. That's if he had dropped the rifle to run. Right. Is, uh, so. Okay, is, 
we got to see. If, I mean, is there is there anything? Uh, I guess we haven't asked him. What the hell happened to you? Why did you get burned like that? Right, so that sets him off on another litany of of how the various members of his crew were taken, right? Killed, torn apart. I'll ask uh, Geek. Uh, do Do you have any uh, tracking data on on Corporal uh, Hicks or on the on the uh, Android uh, Bishop? There are four cryo chambers active. Corporal Dwayne Hicks occupies one. The Android synthetic Bishop occupies another, and two civilians. And where where right. is that relative to us? It's down on the crew decks. Okay. Closer to the uh, to the docking bay. Yeah, they're frozen. So I think we should restrain this uh, this SOB, and then uh, question. Now that now that uh, Geek has control has access to Mother, does he need to be there, or can he no. talk to her? Okay. There are some things you know, like blow up the ship. That would require being in that spot to do it, but otherwise he can just talk to mother. All right. So let's restrain this. Let's restrain the the prisoner, and then let's let's uh, make our way down to to the cryo chamber. Yeah. Well, but well, at this point too, I just kind of lose it just for a second, you know. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And I, I grab grab this guy by the chest, like. Screw a freaking screw screw bell on the regime or how this. Who the hell is Funkmire? Who the hell is Pong? What the hell happened, Joe? You said everybody was. You said every is dead. Why, Bowski, said, what's the? the yeah, you, yeah, you said everybody else. Everybody else is dead, except for Hicks. They died how on the, the planet. The you... They died on the planet before. They blew themselves up. Blew themselves up. What the hell are you talking about? I'd like push on the side. Say we just waste this bastard. Oh, man. Uh, let's restrain him. We might be able to get the docs to get him talking once we get him back. And we should leave uh, Graham and Nolan here at the bridge, secure the bridge. Right. And watch over him. Right. Mother has another tight. interrogative, and that mm -hmm. is a query to Wayland Yutani about the destruction of their terraforming plant, Hadley's Hope. There are a bunch of notices that are just kind of cycling through for oh, attention okay. and the, the captain is being notified when he's quiet <laughs> sorry i cut you off i'll say what were you saying yeah no i just telling them to to restrain this guy with duct tape because you know that's it's that's uh you can play near future far future to always use duct tape in the military and uh watch over him and then we'll be ready to set out to, to see if we can get some living marines out of here if you okay. can't fix it, duck it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And looking at the time to save that time and bring this session to its close, you are able to rouse Dwayne Hicks. And he is heavily sedated, but under the advisement of the automated medical bay, you can get the recounting of the destruction of Hadley's Hope and how they barely escaped with their lives from an alien infestation, the likes of which you would not believe. Creatures that lay eggs inside you and give birth to rapid growing killing machines with acid for blood. Nice. <laughs> see the, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Well, this is good because this means that we no longer have to pretend that we don't know <laughs> what's coming. <laughs> so I, I'm on board with this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've got you, baby. <laughs> yeah. I will not abandon you. <laughs> yes. Awesome. All, All right. right. Tons, of, tons of fun. I got to bounce. Uh, good, good seeing everybody. Thanks, yeah. Anthony. Yes, sir, everything. Okay. Yeah, Cheers. Man. You're done good, kid. You're done good. <laughs> All right. Interesting how that panic escalated all of a sudden. Oh, well, it didn't, how much stress that did we fast. get? How much stress was, did we I got the four. 
Some, some people yeah, get to five. Some yeah, people, some people get, get to five. five. Okay, yeah. and as high as an eight. So on the panic that's, roll, yes, that's interesting, because yeah. after you start hitting tens on the panic roll, <clears throat> your actions fail. Yeah. So you're yeah. no longer effective, right? Whatever you're rolling just to not be effective, right? How how badly are you know how bad off are you? Yeah. And uh, and that's a nice spiral of chaos. We went from one stress to four stress in the blink of an eye. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. Yeah, you liked it? But that, that was, yeah, that was, that was appropriate, though. Smart on fire, that, that's, you know, that's scary. Yeah. That's, that's bad. <laughs> really Did bad. I surprise that's, you? Oh, yeah, that was surprising. Yeah. I was like, holy crap. Forgot about something like that kind of uh, possibility, you know, this thing spraying us with bullets, something like that. Man, we're a yeah. goner. <laughs> yeah, it made sense. They barricaded themselves in and put in a sentry gun. So it's a. Yeah, wow. he had access to a uh, an empty, right, Marine dropship. I mean, right, right. Or not, I mean, frigate, not dropship. And, but uh, the other implication is that the aliens are in the ship with us right now. Well, yeah. Yeah, thanks. They got barricaded <laughs> after Hicks was in in frozen in the lockers. So there's aliens on board right now. And one chest burster at least that we've seen. So Yay. we might have we might have another alien in the bridge right now. Right now. Duct in, tape. In, yeah. <laughs> Duct tape to the chair. Awesome. Right. <laughs> he's about to he's about to come out with this. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Yeah, exactly. I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. No, I, this this mission has come to <coughs> has come to an end, All right? So we'll end the mission here. Um, you have control of the Sulaco. You have the Montebello, which is more than capable of destroying uh, the pirate vessel. And uh, given the the length of time to get the story out of Hicks and the type of story that it is. The commander, the higher ranking commander, the captain aboard the Montebello would order the pirate ship destroyed. So for these Marines, this crazy adventure ends. Then our next mission will pick up later. Okay. Nice. Right. Nice. Sounds good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, awesome. And we didn't get to fire our guns, Eli. Does that mean, this means we need another session. I'm not need, quitting yeah, on this need, game until I, I shoot I my pulse rifle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> was, even then. I'm sorry you didn't get to fire your <laughs> pulse rifle. I, I, uh, I you guys are just too clever for violence. <laughs> 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 too cautious. Too cautious for violence too. Yeah. <laughs> I did feel I did feel bad that the combat kind of staggered to a, a halt. I wanted it to go really smoothly because it doesn't have a lot of moving parts. But um, I guess we talked about important stuff in play. They'll go faster next time. Yeah, yeah we did. But well, yeah, and, and I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a routine combat, right? Because because there's not 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 good targets for it to shoot. I mean, we could have shot at the gun, but that's just not plan A right. usually. Right. This is the other way to die. Yeah. Had it way, been way, one way, guy, way up higher than shooting at like, a, a blast iris. You know, yeah. Had it been one guy, we'd probably taken cover at the doors and then, you know, leaned in and shot at right. the guy. But... That's a bad thing to have pinning you down. Yeah. So now I can tell you about the die roll. Right. So it's a sentry gun, which is a base of eight modified by two for its ammunition, modified by two for being on full auto fire. So I rolled 12 dice. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? That's Well, that's pretty that's, good. That's good. He only yeah. hit us with five damage. <laughs> right. that, that's good. Which, that's which good. between armor and, uh, and cover, cover, I managed to, yeah. to avoid. But you guys didn't. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that's what that's what Baxter rolls with a freaking smart gun. I mean, I've got agility four, range combat three, um, 
smart gun is a plus three bonus right off the bat three dice and then uh i've got uh, um my the talent of weapon specialist in the you know m56 a2 so that's 12 dice so yeah, it's it's pretty bad good. yeah you don't want to you don't want baxter shooting at you. yeah base damage is three yeah. and then extra successes you buy on top of that yeah exactly Wow, but I had a huge armor roll. It was like, oh my god! But that right, would, that could have taken us. Yeah. That could have wiped us all out, right? One couple of bad rolls, and we oh, all yeah. die. Yeah. Not even. I mean, if you were just standing in front, like if you walked into a hallway where one was set up to ambush right. you, and took five, right? You're. Uh, it has uh, something I forgot in play is it has armor penetration, so you're only oh, rolling half yeah. of those dice. Oh. You should have been rolling. Uh, yeah. Five or six, oh. five or six dice, but uh, right, that's right. Uh, Would have mowed us down, man. <laughs> right. well, that was a good mistake to to, to make. <laughs> so when the this is one of the few games where the fluff, right, the descriptive text of it blowing, you know, blowing arms and and limbs off, yeah. uh, pretty accurate is, is actually accurate, right? Because it it should right. take an unarmored person to broken, no matter how tough they are. Right. And uh, so the the armored person is is getting seriously messed up. But, yeah, uh, this is this is us getting wing diving for cover. You know, taking taking three damage right. from that thing. That's that's a glancing hit from that thing. Like oof. Yeah. <laughs> because of the you know because of the yeah. poor angle of fire because you were so close right. to it. Yeah. So I I was imagining you were being hit by the debris from the debris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Pretty awful. And I can't believe really in the painkillers on the kid and on the on the pirate. Actually just walking around you? limping, you know, with this cane. You know, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, son. Uh, you know, well, he bandaged you, right? Uh, but it's I, just it has no mechanical effect. And it's I oh, only yeah. had like five of those, right? So it's like right. I should spend it on the pirate, right? Because if we want to talk to him, we need to get well, him absolutely. coherent, right? Yeah. So, but hey, it's interesting. <laughs> Nice. Very, very cool. Yeah, so that, does it feel like different than combat in Forbidden Lands, you, which you were recently playing a little? It's a different genre, and I think the different the difference in genre opens things up a lot, right? Possibly because because of the baggage that one has from playing, you know, 40 years of, of dungeon crawls, right? So if you change the rules too much in a dungeon crawl it feels wrong to me no matter what because you know it feels like it's you know the guy's incompetent and you know it's missing his roles and he's you know knocking himself out in combat and none of that makes any sense uh in that setting but in this setting they're panicking so it's a different experience right you're even if you you know quote unquote knock yourself out right it's 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 out of stress it's out of panic it's out of, you know, so it's a different genre. Um, and the space, you know, military sci-fi component is important because those ridiculous damages, uh, you can see that, right? It's the, it's, the, uh, it's the full auto armor piercing, you know, it should blow us to pieces. That makes perfect sense that, you know, people die immediately. And, and it's sort of part of the genre. So, so I, I like this implementation more than the other one, but it, I think it's more streamlined. It's easier to understand. Uh, the other one seems a little bit clunkier, a little bit too many feats and talents. So even here, there's a couple of talents, but there's very few, at least at the start. Uh, in the other game, I felt there were like too many talents. I had four or five talents to keep track of constantly. And it's like, wait, wait, does that give you a plus one? Does that take a plus one away? And it feels fiddly. This one feels stream streamlined, right? I'm the medic. I can do these two things. And, you know, I can actually do anything, any skill, but there's right. not many modifiers to it, right? So I don't know. I like this implementation much better. Now, I, it could have gone that the sentry gun killed one or more or all of you right how yeah, would that yes. have gone over fine it would have been fine because i have my backups it would have been like okay back at the mantis back at the back at the mantis yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so my backups come out of Mantis and let's go, you know. But uh, but that's part of the genre as well, right? That's not your usual conceit, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was seriously ready for Baxter to be just cut to ribbons. You know, by that thing, as soon as he said that, and he's like, oh, oh man, there we go. <laughs> I had no, no, I hadn't really read up on those guns. I had no idea what kind of damage they do. I'm rolling like two, two successes, you know, or, you know, for, for armor, you know. Like, yeah. So I was, I was really, you know, re- ready for him to be just shot, you know, visions of, visions of, uh, playing uh one of jason's games and opening the door at the dungeon and getting killed instantly we're coming flying through my head and what am i flying that's that's part of the genre it's like you know that's, right. that's something that would happen in, in that in that situation so that's it yeah. right all the characters that were not michael bean uh yeah. had that exact experience so yeah would it would you know wouldn't be a little disappointing or like oh well that's kind of stuff but you know i mean that would that fits with you know that fits with what happens and you know and you know these guys are i, I just think about like if these guys are 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 ragtag squads now what's left of squads you know fighting pirates i mean firefights are just dangerous period you know but never mind never mind some kind of xenomorph just just fighting other people with these sorts of weapons you know, it seems like you're getting hit you get hit Part, with one of these weapons particularly, it's, it's particularly in this setting where you're fighting in the hallway right yeah if, 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 if you're fighting in a hallway that's like a death trap firefighting right. in the hallway so it's just... at least we had barricades and i'm really surprised that nobody got broken i would have yeah. thought at least one guy would have gone down which is good in this game because you're not dead you're crawling and moaning right yeah. and you're not unconscious so right? like at the end of our average week say if yeah. we had done it correctly, if I had remembered armor piercing in the moment, then yeah. we would have had oh, yeah, I'd have a variety Everybody of broken individuals. Yeah. With the caveat that you do roll a critical hit when you get broken. So that might kill you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or it just might, you know, mess you up further. <laughs> There's a lot of really juicy that. critical hits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are. There are. There are. And some of them. Some of them are just really described fairly, you know, nicely. I mean, I like like yeah. some of them. Some of them <laughs> and I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna roll a critical hit just to see. I rolled fifty one. That's a bad one. Ooh, Busted kidney. Bad. Bad. Can't run. Only crawl. Mobility minus two. Fatal. Yes. Fatal. So you immediately roll fatal. Oh wait, you. I think you did. You roll it immediately, or did you roll it in one day? Yeah. Probably uh, roll. You think you roll immediately, and if you survive, you roll again in one day. Yeah, but it healing time two d six days. Yeah. Shot All in right. the kidney, yeah. oh. and you are to blame. You give the Marines a bad name. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yes, you make a death roll. No, you make a death roll when the listed time runs out. Yeah. So you're hit in the kidney. You're crawling. Oh. But there's a chance for the medic to get to you because you only roll for death after one day, right? So you get to linger in pain <laughs> yeah. for the whole day, right? So, and then you... Right. As we can and reference from yeah. the important medical doctrine of young guns, right? Being gut yeah. shot is a terrible way to go. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so now, now Baxter's laying there. <clears throat> His only defense is to lay still like a slug, and he's beckoning, beckoning to Rios to come and pause him up. And Rios like, uh-uh. uh, no, no, not with that gun. <laughs> the gun's still zipping around. Looking. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. Now, uh-uh. now I'm curious to see what would have happened if I had gotten hit. Uh, so blue is the first digit. <laughs> oh, instant death. I would have, I would have, it's like crush boom. skull. Your yeah. story ends here. Yes. Blow his head off. Right. Oh, yes, no. yeah. <laughs> so this this could be a part of the the nighttime cinema of of rios's dreams right right exactly. he's always back in that hallway above lv426 and the door opens up and the gun opens fire <laughs> <laughs> well you know this also drives home the importance of having those backup characters and you know yeah. uh I think it might be a real short, you know. <laughs> yeah, possible. I, yeah, 
Yeah, that was probably. I, I feel bad. I have, to, I have to apologize to Craig, but like that's all I can think of is back from just yelling and sh- open, you know, close the effing door. Jesus Christ, <laughs> we're getting killed out here, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. it felt it felt very natural to like freak out in that level, especially oh, especially the ones, especially the ones where you're raising everybody else's stress. You know, I'm thinking to yourself, you've got to, you've got to then, you know, um, articulate, explain, articulate. Well, how are you freaking everybody else out? You know, like yeah. it's. it's <laughs> It's not just you see Baxter loses cool. It's like Baxter's like losing his crap, you know. Right. And of course that was clumsy for us this time. It's like, oh, I've taken a, a condition. What is my condition? Well, it's called yeah. trembling and it does this. And but <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to do that a lot right. faster yeah. Yeah. in the future. Yeah. And then we'll just and do it. Right. It's the novelty of the system as well. It's like, oh, first panic roll. Yay. Yeah. Well, I've got um, I've got a lot of the um, stuff on on another iPad, so I think I'm gonna print out some of the pages. I think we're gonna use a lot off, more often. It's like it's gonna have it on me, but that's one of them for sure. Printed yeah. The, this, thing this, and, the screen yeah. is pretty good too. Yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah. compact. It's, yeah. But I gave you all the tables in, yeah, the, we got them in all. the thing. You just I printed mine out in cardboard because I had some of the cardstock thing, and uh, it's really handy. And all you got to do is, you know, if you have the PDF, screenshot it and invert colors so the background becomes white and it's still perfectly legible, right? So uh, letters uh, become black. Yeah. I like I like the screen simply because I've got it quite far away, Mm -hmm. right? I've got uh, on the other side of the desk, but it's large print for the critical injuries and the panic roll so I can still see it. But Mm. those are... I'm predicting now the only charts I'm ever going to use that are on it. And I'll have to look at, at your cheat sheets to get to the charts that I want. And I'll be looking at the cheat sheets yes. for the rest of the time yes. we play the game. And I'll be looking at the screen every yes. time we do a critical injury or, you know, so yeah, that's, got the that's kind of a permanent annoying. mental trauma, the critical injuries on synthetics, component damage. So, so we had book. one we had yeah. one glitch, I think, one actual glitch, and that was I didn't know or I didn't remember that you could switch initiative at the top of the round. Yeah. Now that I say it I out loud, it starts right. to seem like yeah. I must have read it somewhere. You immediately roll uh initiative, and then you have the opportunity to switch your cards around, then yeah. play starts, and then uh, then it's the stunts that you can right. switch. Or I so, think at the beginning of the next round you could yeah, theoretically any, any turn. again i think it's I think exactly it's yeah, yeah. So. um but the i mean obviously in hindsight what craig wanted to do and i kept shutting him down was he wanted to close the door he wanted to go first and close the door oh, okay right so that's why he was asking about initiative um but of course i'm thinking you can't change the initiative and i'm right, not listening to the for the intention that's not stated, mm. but I mean, that's, he's right there at the door. He wants to, wants to close the door, but um, so that's, that's one of yeah, those so. things about the, so, about processing the system. Yeah. And the, the actual switching via stunt is when you're switching with your opponent. So you're, I'm going first. Right. So yeah. it's, yeah. You're stealing the initiative away from him because of yeah. how you're hitting him. Right. So you're, so you're, in this you're pushing him back or vital, crippling right? him. You'd be going yeah. with the sentry, right? That, right. So gotcha. All right. Anyway, I, guess. I have to jettison. We have to let yep. Jose get back to his his wife, thinking he's normal instead of strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's never <laughs> thought that. She's, She's never, never thought, thought that. that. Yeah, it's like to <laughs> base. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cool. And so from that, so from now on, though, the cool thing is on these next missions, we are we are completely blind. We maybe we know what a xenomorph is, or have some some, but but we're not we're not you know seeing things that we know what it was. Like we, you know, it was a little right. bit you know, you know, we're, we're going in the in the in the bay of the Salak, and of course we all know what happened there. But you know, right. yeah, we now we can go into situations where we have no clue what happened. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, or if it's more xenomorphs, we can go. That, that's a xenomorph skin discarded. That's the molecular acid. We so, never, we never figured out that's a xenomorph skin discarded. I'm still saying that was just a, you know, that's a clean room suit. Yeah. That's all it is. <laughs> all right. Tyvek Thanks suit. for playing, guys. All right. Oh, yeah. that was awesome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. Us.
This is a little on-the-road commentary for our Alien, the RPG, campaign, which is called What Comes Home to Roost. We've run the first mission now, and it was conducted in two parts, and I suspect that the missions will all be conducted in parts. These parts should not be construed as acts but simply a function of how much time we have available. If it had been possible to play for four hours, then we would have done this as a one-shot. Uh, because we have two weeks coming up where not everyone will be available, it was preferable to end this one while it was in motion rather than continuing on for a third part, but having to pick it up uh, after several weeks had gone by. So, that's why this one ends after two sessions, and that's why so much uh, force is coming from the Game Master position about how this particular thing comes to an end. There was lots of things that uh, the players wanted to do, and there was lots of things that the characters wanted to be involved in, but we we cut away from that, and it can inform play with that sense of incompleteness when we pick up the next mission. And uh, I think that is that's an enhancement to future portrayal of character. Whereas hanging on to do one more 90 minute or two hour session where details have been lost from memory and, and uh, the feelings aren't as sharp and the understanding of the system uh, has to be reacquired and, and all of those things, uh, I think that would not work so well nor, nor have as long a shelf life for inactivity. So, in terms of presentation on the YouTube channel, the two parts of the mission were presented differently. Now, the first time, I was going for as much atmosphere as I felt was possible with the likelihood of interruptions because we're learning a new game and system, and the likelihood of interruptions because there are going to be questions about the setting, and the likelihood of interruptions because of my pack of dogs. Right? So as much atmosphere as, as that allows, <laughs> plus the extreme limitations on atmosphere brought about by online play. But my intention with the first session was to focus on doing what I could to facilitate and encourage in-character play. My goal was to get to at least some part of the session with in-character as character play. And I think that was fairly successful based on reports and based on my now having viewed it several times. Uh, going through the editing process. And, uh, by editing, I mean, you know, putting stuff on the screen and uh, that, that kind of stuff. Now, in terms of what got put on the screen, as I was going through that process, it occurred to me that one thing that might enhance the discussion I've been having on the podcast about and on the blog about description, about interaction, about the nature of role-playing from a preparation for improvisational basis with horror, with military, science fiction, action, horror blends like aliens. Um, you know, how do we prepare to be able to be flexible, to take all the skills and capabilities and all the different interests that your playgroup are, are bringing, all the excitement that they have for, for playing some 
an iconic type of character like a colonial marine in a science fiction setting. If you are making your own uh, campaigns, then how can you be prepared and present a consistent world and yet be able to pivot to sensible responses and then your own actions because of those responses and your own interactions because of those responses and how can you bring that all into you know a sense of fluidity that feels like you are ready that you're not just winging it or that you have practiced and prepared functional winging it in the context of what it is that we are playing. So, <laughs> it occurred to me during the editing process that instead of doing the usual thing that I do with those videos, which is put commentary up on the screen about uh, what a rule is, you know, if it's the first time that we're using it, or putting commentary on the screen that we have made some kind of mistake or we've made some kind of adjustment, or if there are optional rules, we could do this or we could do this and this is the one we chose and here's where you find those rules for yourself, that, that kind of thing. Rather than do that usual method that I could model the in-character, as-character approach by putting in the background information that these colonial marine characters might suspect, things that they've heard in, in rumors, things that uh, you know they've been told not to ask about, fragments of missions that they know about or were on. They don't understand the whole picture, but it seems to them that there's something strange or, or they don't understand why certain decisions were made, that kind of thing. So by feeding into that aspect of the alien universe and bringing it up uh, for the viewing audience, it sends that message of what does it mean to facilitate immersion. Right? There's the way that we describe, there's the tones of voice we use, there's the environment we use, there's for some groups there are visuals, there, there are audio cues, things like this, things that contribute to allowing that sense of imagination to blossom and that focus to sharpen to the point where other things are being excluded. The sense of time passes. But most importantly, that the character and their position in, the, you know, the fictional character and their actual position in their fictional world is sufficiently realized to trigger a sense of empathy and understanding so that we begin to make the decisions that the character would make and we as the player can respond to or react to that on our own and be surprised or pleased or you know, uh, consider our life choices or things along those lines. But uh, So that's what I did. That's what I did for the first 1A part of the mission and you can go and you can watch and you can see that there's all these details appearing on the screen here and there throughout the episode that, that reinforce or bolster the attitudes that our colonial marines are displaying and the situation that we find themselves and it serves as a crossover between what the players know because they've watched the movies and what the characters know because they live in the world. That whole first mission really is intended as a bridge to bring player knowledge and character knowledge together. Because that's one of the weaknesses of this kind of IP, this kind of intellectual property, is that these two things are often separated and players are often asked to pretend not to know things and that can be frustrating. So, the first mission I had in mind as a way to help us get used to the mechanisms of this game and help us get used to the setting for this game, 
especially our particular take on it where we're just using the first two films but also earn the right to use that knowledge and you know I, I hope that that crossover between the film worlds and my implementation of the fictional world wasn't you know too cliche or, or too jarring uh, for the players but it's a promise from me that you know this is the last time that this happens because now you are in a position to know everything that you know and you can bring that to bear as we move forward through the rest of the campaign uh, we don't have to track what we've learned in character and keep it separate from what we know as people have been watching these films for decades for part B I thought well you know I can continue that same sort of thing and to a certain extent I did although this time it was visual representation of information much more than it was textual representation of information but mainly I approached running the session differently so I approached it as a game master running everything simply as the game master I avoided uh, first person NPC interactions I spoke to the players about what their characters understand what's obvious, what's known this kind of thing so it was a, a very intentional use of the second person undefined throughout the run of the session and you can see the difference if you watch and you compare the way that we talk to each other in the first part of the mission in the first video even though I'm I don't have a lot of NPCs available in in the scenes that we played through there is a there is a way of describing things there is a way of pitching your voice there's a way of interacting there's a pace of interacting that's targeting that character layer rather than the player layer in the second one second video there is the reverse we're on that player level I'm on that player level and I don't shift down into that way of describing things on a personal level I describe things on a conceptual level I trigger movie memories far more often it's a little hard for me to override my my learned habits so there are of course moments during the run where I am somewhere in between these two approaches there's the approach I intend that is staying on the player layer and there's the approach that is normal for me which is being on the character layer and so there are there are scenes especially when things get exciting where we're somewhere in between uh, those two positions but I, I think it stands as an example for comparison and contrasting we can look at these two short episodes or two short sessions side by side as they form one mission and see how they differ and how a lot of the triggering of how they differ comes from the way the players are spoken to by the game master so I hope that you know if this kind of thing interests you that I hope that you know this experiment and this different way of presenting the actual play video uh, gives you some food for thought and that that thought will you know encourage you to seek me out and communicate with me about it things that you've tried questions that you have about what I've what I've tried and uh, etc etc